Hi, everyone. Thanks to be here for this talk about log management. I'm Nicola Frankel. Um, I've been for like more than 15 years a uh, like developer architect as a consultant in different contexts and for different companies. And like since last September, I decided to come to talk to conferences and be a developer advocate because, you know, we are, you have less schedules and less timelines to respect. Um, even when I was a developer and an architect, I, I was very interested in the other side of the wall, in the ops world, so monitoring and stuff like that. I work for a company called Exoscale. We are a European cloud provider. Our company is in Switzerland, but we have data centers uh, all around Europe. Actually, that's one of the reasons I'm doing this talk is because it's some of the stuff that I'm going to describe is how we do it. Who here cannot understand that? This is Java, I am sorry. I have been a Java developer, but everybody understand that, right? Okay. Um, can you tell me what's the problem with this statement? It compiles and it runs, but there is an issue. No type check. No. Type check. Uh, no. I'm using SLF4G, so this like double square stuff, double bracket will be replaced by card.getPrice. So no, everything should work as, as expected. But sorry, oh, but it doesn't. Get price might be super expensive. If you have done any e-commerce stuff, I mean, the price is not a value. It's a computation. The computation might take a super long time. So... If I, if I do it, this is the code, and I want to run it, and I want to like log the start time and the end time so I can like get the time it takes me to do that. It's not because it's Java. It's just like super long. <laughs> it takes a long time. And, and if we check the implementation of get price, it's... Well, it's very stupid, <laughs> but it, it, means, it means to simulate the fact that it takes a long time, and it does take a long time. And, and the problem with that is it happens a lot. And if you, want, you, you, want, you might want to get the price in some contexts, and you might not be interested in other contexts, but the log statement must be there all the time. So you might say, okay, normally, this only happens when I like I'm in at the debug level, and still every time I get this computation done, even if I am at the info level. So one of the way to bypass that is to say, okay, we can every time we check if we are at the right level. So if we say every time we say is debug enabled and we are not debug then it's super fast again. But the problem in that case is that it's super boring for the developer. It's not one log statement somewhere, it's log statements everywhere that need to do that. Worse, not only it's boring, but it's error prone because it's super easy to, de to do like that. To have like unsynchronization between the guard and the log statement itself. This is bad because then you will again get faced with the same problem, but this is also bad because it's the reverse. In that case, you, you, you don't get what you want. So this is on, only marginally fixing the issue. What could be a good way to do that? to put the logic inside the logger, yes. Um, and we can put the logic inside the logger, and actually we can do it in a way that, sorry, it's not this one. It's this one. Here I, I created what I call a lazy logger, and this lazy logger actually gets not the log message itself, but a wrapper around the message. Like in Java 8, it's called a supplier, which is 
like not a, 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 a wrapper, a wrapper function. So when I call get, I will get the result. But so far, it's lazy. And in that case, it's very easy for me to say, OK. And here, it's also very fast, not as fast as manual stuff, because I need to create the object itself, but it's still like nicely fast. So one of the problems is it starts from the developer. The developer must be aware that something is happening when he writes a log statement, and someone must provide him with the tools to handle that. Second problem is, unfortunately, log doesn't happen in like the virtual world. We are bound to the real world. And so we must be aware of where we are logging, in which physical drive we are logging. It can be a hard drive. It can be a SSD. It can be a network file system. And now we go to the other side of the chain, which means that the administrator must know and must like fix the fact where, where, where we uh, log the stuff. So it, depending on, on the physical device, you must be aware that you will have different performances. Again, no big magic. It's just stuff to take care of. The, writing process, the, the write, log writing process is you open the stream, you write the bytes, you close the stream. And actually, opening the stream and closing the stream takes a non-negligible time compared to writing the bytes themselves. So perhaps we could just open the stream, write multiple chunks of bytes, and then close the stream. And opening and, and closing would be just done once. A. That is possible in most frameworks, because by default, logging is synchronous, but there is nothing preventing you from doing asynchronous logging. This is exactly what I described. However, when you start having these asynchronous logging ideas, then you, again, you've got other issues. So this is how you can do it with SLF4G, again, in the Java world, but I'm sure that in your uh, own tech stack, you've got the same. Using logback, you've got configuration now. First configuration is what's the size of the buffer, of course, because it's in synchronous, so you must buffer the writes. The second is sometimes you will get a lot of messages, and some messages, like error and info, are much more important than other messages. And when the queue starts being full, Perhaps it's better to discard those non very important messages than doing something else. Another configuration that you have is hey, is it better to really be very, very fast or to drop messages? Is it better to have every info, every piece of data available or to be slower? And you, you must decide for yourself in your context, but again, it's a configuration that you must choose. And of course, the log message itself is not very important by itself. What is important is the context of the log message. So of course, you've got the timestamp, you've got the log level, you've got the thread name, the class name, the file name, whatever, the method name, whatever. There are a lot of important metadata that you might want to capture. The thing is, not all of them are free. I mean, most of them might be very expensive to compute again. So it's a, th a trade-off between I want this data and it slows me down. Some of them are very, very expensive to compute. So perhaps it's better to write them down in the log message. But then you get the same problem as I mentioned before. You might not have the right information. So the line number, you might decide to write it by hand. But then if, you, if somebody adds like lines of code before your statement, then you've got unsynchronized again. And even if you have everything, then it's not very interesting by itself. I mean, how many of you go to a server and read the log file anymore? It, it does. Thanks. Um, 
in general, what you also do is at some point you like get everything into a centralized place. Do you do that? More or less. Okay, let's say more or less. Um, because you want to correlate the events that happen sometimes on the same machine between uh, like different nodes in the cluster or stuff like that. So you might know about Elasticsearch, you might know about Splunk, about Greylog. There are different like frameworks and engines and tech stacks to do that. I tend to be more familiar with Elasticsearch, so that will be what I will be uh, using in the rest of this talk. Anyway, in general, you use additional metadata because now it becomes even more complex because you have like different log files, so you need to know which log file is the source and perhaps you have like different IPs or directly use the host name, you might and probably should have different environments, so you must know that this log file is like production, this log file is staging, and again, you might have different cloud zone if you are using the cloud. Well, this is additional metadata that you probably need. And if you just log that, it's not very interesting. It's just like if you are doing backups but never try restore. In general, all those logs, you want to search. I mean, that's the point of the logs. And now comes the problem. If you want to be very, very fast, then you can ingest your logs, put everything into Elasticsearch, and every time you search, it's going to take a long time. Or you can decide that every time you send a log message, this log message is structured, so you must put the right information into the right bucket, and everything will be fine. And of course, it takes time to analyze, to parse, and to put them into the right place. So if we are using the Elastic stack, you can have FileBit that scrapes the log files and send it to Logstash to parse the stuff that in turn will send it to Elasticsearch. And here you can see that I've been an architect because I can draw nice UML diagrams. So there are like two phases, creation, so the application creates the log file, and at some point FileBit takes the log file, reads the log file, and sends the log to Logstash, and Logstash transforms the log into JSON and pushes JSON to Elasticsearch. And I don't know if you have been using Logstash and the grok patterns, it's not super fun to do first, and depending on the log file that you will be parsing, it can be very complex, and again, complexity means that it takes time. Also, I think that Logstash is written in Ruby, right? And let's say it's perhaps not the fastest language ever. So I have this like super nice uh, log message that gets scrapped, and in the end, that is how I want to interpret it to send it to Elasticsearch. So that at this point, I can say, OK, find me everything that happened on the info level and in this class. But if we think about it for a second, actually, that's not necessary. Think about it. We are creating like a string, and then we parse it to create JSON. Why don't we create JSON just directly? So here I am always my, my stupid example. For the developer, it doesn't change anything. It's just that now when I run it, I already create JSON. The important part is it must be on the same line. So again, you don't need to say to a file bit, OK, you must compute the fact that two lines, two consecutive lines might or might not be part of the same log message. And if you are using SLF4J and logback, it's pretty stupid. I mean, it's just the pattern that it needs to be like this. 
it's no, no, no black magic. So this is what I, what I get. Again, it's on different lines, but you shouldn't do it. And your architecture is simpler, your performances will be better, it's everybody wins that. Also, what you can think about is, I've talked about like writing on the disk and then scrapping from the disk, and perhaps in some cases, you might think that it's not a very good idea. So on one side, at least you are persistent, but on the other side, it takes more time. What if, we could, if you could just send the event logs to the place that you want? So you could directly create an appender to send the logs to Elasticsearch in the first place. Nothing prevents you from doing that. In that case, however, the problem becomes that, well, everything will be in memory, and if something happens, then you will lose data. Also, I mentioned a lot of time that there is like a sweet spot between like consistency or persistence and, and, and being like fast. Um, for that, I encourage you to consider the fact that you might do like hot reloading of configuration. Like, like numbers are not very important and take a lot of time to compute. Sometimes, however, they are ve become very important for whatever reason. So you might have like hot reloading for saying, hey, I have a problem on this server for whatever reason. I need to get the line number. I don't want to switch off my GVM and restart it again. So auto-reloading configuration might be handy because you ch just change the configuration on the server and then you, you, you've got the line numbers. Finally, how we do it at exascale, because that was the best picture I, I showed you. And this is meant to like demo the fact that whatever is best of read in your context might be completely different. Um, so we are using syslog-ng instead of filebit, because for whatever reason, when we started, it was not available, filebit was not available, and people at exascale are more like sysadmin, and they are very familiar with syslog-ng. And also, we have Kafka in between. This is not super fast. This is not what we want. However, in our cases, as I said, we are a cloud provider, and we are using logs to build our customer. So this is not only logs, those are events, and we do a lot of the computation of the events of the billing uh, in Kafka. So Kafka is a place to go where we do a lot of like, business rules, and so it's better for us to send everything into Kafka, and only then to push it to Elasticsearch when, when we need it. So depending on your context, what I showed you might be very different. So summary, um, it involves everyone. So the first is developers must send not the result of the computation, but the computation itself to the log, so that you don't compute something that is not necessary. You should consider the physical file system. You should go asynchronous, if speed is more important than reliability, of course. You shouldn't use expensive metadata, but if you do, then you should consider having hot reloading so that when you need it, you have them. Um, of course, just like putting stuff into Elasticsearch or any data storage is not important. The real stuff that you want is to search, so you should consider perhaps not the, fast that the fact that the logs are super fast, but the fact also that the search in the log is super fast. So, of course, use schema on writes. And then don't care about parsing and, gro and, and, and having a, a big grokking pattern. Just send JSON directly. If you want to have like performance logs, everybody should be involved. It should go from the developer to the sysadmin to the architect. And of course, it's all a matter of context. And I've been a consultant. The answer is always it depends. So don't take everything that I told you here as with a pinch of salt, because in your context might be completely different answer. Um, so yeah, you can read my blog, you can read our blog, the blog of my company, and you can follow me on Twitter. And perhaps now I have like one minute for questions. One minute for questions, like one question. Thank you for the nice talk. <laughs>